Hello everyone, Kenji here and welcome to my YouTube channel. And for our new viewers, before we start, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you may be notified for our upcoming new videos. And this time, I will be sculpting a stalker. Yes, a death stalker scorpion. Leurus quinquestriatus, one of the venomous scorpion species. So come on and let's do the stalking, I mean sculpting. Here, I made a fat tailed scorpion before and unfortunately I haven't started my channel that time so I never took filming the process. I want the size of this fat tail for my dead stalker too so I did measure it and cut the aluminum wire. And bending it to the position I want. I did an anatomical sketch of this dead stalker and this will be my guide as I go through. I made this aluminum wire tip pointy using a metal file. See this pointy tip? This will be its venom barb so I'm bending it according to that shape. And now I'm adding foil for bulking the body. And then wrap it with a thin sheet of clay. I use Sculpt Original for this and shape it based on the reference. The scorpion's body is divided into two sections. The mesosoma or the body consists of these segments including the abdomen and the prosoma or the head. And now I'm adding those segments on its body. and also added those segments on its abdomen. And now I'm sculpting its chelicera or its mouth parts. Adding those fine ridge on the top of its body. And now I'm adding all the underside parts including the coxa, sternum, and pectins. Pectins are comb-like organs that brushes the substrates as it walks to detect vibrations and potential prey or danger perhaps and send the signal to its brain by means of chemosensory. I lay a piece of cling wrap plastic over these underside parts so that when I'm refining these details they will be easily rounded and smooth. I puncture the area where I'm going to drill them for the legs later on. And 
now it's time to add the eyes. Scorpions possesses two types of visual organs, the lateral and the median eyes. All have their own function. And using the same method I did to my previous bugs, I embed these little pre-baked clay balls for the eyes. And for the lateral eyes on the sides, I just sculpt them along with the head. And as I've done sculpting the body, it's ready for first bake. And I bake it over my Arabian desert sand to avoid deforming the details. Sand will stick on the clay, yes. But you'll see guys that just by brushing it out, grains of sand fall off easily. And now let's sculpt the pincers. And I imitate them using aluminum wire. I bend them into U-shape and trim the tip, pointed, and pinch them with pliers. And I also made the tips of these pincers pointy using a metal file. And then I wrap them with clay and leaving all the tips exposed. And after done the pincers, set them aside for a moment and let's go and sculpt the tail. Scorpion's tail consists of a culeus or the barb and next to it is the telson or the sting in which venom is stored and next to it is the five segments called metasoma. I am now covering the wire with clay and make separations indicating each segments. And also added those ridge on its tail. And now I'm adding the telson, the canister for the venom. We know that the scorpion's venom is deadly. But did you know that it's also expensive? One gallon of that stalker's venom can cost 39 million dollars. Why? Because it's difficult to get. A single scorpion can only produce 2 milligrams of venom at a time. So a droplet may cost around 130 dollars. For what? Well, the chlorotoxin in scorpion's venom is used in medicine in regards with treatment of some human diseases such as binding cancer cells in the brain and spine and eliminating malaria and so on and so forth. And let's do its pedipalps. Wrap up this wire with a thin sheet of clay and do the sculpting. We commonly call them pincers, but in entomology, they are called pedipalps, and yet they consist of trochanter, femur, patella, and the pincers called kella. And now, I just temporarily attach these pincers and permanently adhere them later. Now the tail and the pincers are ready to bake. And now I prepare the legs by trimming a 1.5 diameter aluminum wire. So what I did is I prepared them all at once by rolling out a thin sheet of clay and wrapping 
each wires. Each one of scorpion legs have different segments, from bottom to top, the apotel which has a pair of angus, the dactyl, the tarsus, the basitarus, the tibia, the patella, the femur, and the coxa. And I trim off the excess clay to reveal the basic form of the legs. I always make sure that all the legs have the same proportion. And now I'm adding those joints using my improvised tool. And I brush the legs with alcohol to make them smooth and they are ready for baking. And after all the parts of the scorpions done, we're ready for assembly. I drill the body of the scorpion and to attach the legs and pedipalps, I use the two parts epoxy. For the painting process, I use folk art acrylics of titanium white and yellow mix as the primary coating. And I did several coatings of it for well coverage. And for those darker area of this dead stalker, I add a thin layer of raw amber and burnt sienna mix for the body, tail, and the abdomen. And I finalized those darker parts using raw amber, black, and burnt sienna mix. and at the same time alternately mixing transitions with lighter yellow by the help of my retarding medium. And to add depth to the overall body, I brush with a wash of burnt sienna. painting the eyes with black along with the tip of its glycera or the mouth parts and also the tip of the tail which is the barb. I cover all the legs with cling wrap so that they may be protected from the painting process that I'm going to do on its abdomen. I painted the abdomen with the mix of raw amber, burnt sienna, black, and sap green. Transitioning the edges with lighter gray mixed with little yellow. and painting those horizontal lines in between stermite segments and blending them a little bit into the dark base. And I'm adding those spiracle or the small openings or pores on which the scorpions conduct air, allowing oxygen to come in and releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And finally, sealing it with water-based polyurethane 
varnish. I use the matte one for this. And yes, the death stalker is finally done. And that's it guys, I bet you got some ideas and you enjoy the learning and the sculpting process at the same time. Thank you very much guys for all your support to this channel of mine and I hope I can produce more helpful sculpting videos and will learn more from every single topic regarding science and art. And join me again next time for another exciting video tutorial. Have a nice day everyone.